Well, welcome back, everyone, to the Mod Showcase with Leaf. As always, it is so wonderful to have you guys here. My name is Leaf, and it is great to have you guys here. Yeah, I know. I'm losing it right now. So, of course, we have a wonderful little showcase for you guys. I do apologize in advance. It's going to be a quick one. Uh, it's Thanksgiving, and it's just this was the only time I had to record. So, of course, we're just going to pop right in here with the gelada by nick and we gotta play it come on we gotta play it guys so of course the gelada is a baboon located only in a small part of ethiopia and maybe Etretia, i believe uh, it should be on the zoopedia we can check that out definitely but look how beautiful these guys are i could not get a better picture than that but yeah only ethiopia and they are so freaking beautiful. Not sure what happened there with the lag spike, but you know, it's totally fine. So this, of course, is made by Nick, and oh my gosh, the way that he was able to make these, like, beautiful face, like, I don't know how you call it, like, the face tufts, it just looks so amazing. And the way he did, like, the overlapping hair, it just turned out so beautiful. And Nick did such an incredible job with this. So amazing job to you, buddy, as always. You do some always amazing work so let's move on from that and we gotta visit our boy frazzle now frazzle hasn't really been here for quite a bit but damn frazzle has graced us with a beautiful little creature so this marvelous little mustelid is also known as the asian palm civet so these guys are located in asia as the name would give it away so they're more so from a little bit more tropical regions as well as like you know the island of borneo they're very widespread but they're just such beautiful creatures they're arboreal and they're pretty, pretty neat. So, of course, we had the African palm civet a while ago. But this guy gives you a little bit more of an Asian flair. So these guys are really cool. So if you are hoping to have, like, a small mammal house or even, like, a small indoor Asian house, these guys would be absolutely perfect for that. And look at them go. Look at them eat away. They're so cute. So, of course, moving on from there, we have a lot of P-Files over here, just a fair warning. I teamed up with Rabid to bring their P-File variants to be new species, and oh my gosh, it was so fun to do this. So, of course, here are Peach and Opal variants, and these guys are probably my favorite out of all the P-Files, or maybe second favorite. We have a really good one coming up. This one's a Peach one, of course, with a little bit more orange coloration. And that one is the opal, a little bit more blue, and they have these beautiful eyes. Hold on, we gotta zoom in on them. They're beautiful and purple. So these are based on real life color morphs of the Indian peafowl. They are more so found in like domesticated uh, versions of the animals, but look at the opal on that one. I don't know, it's so beautiful. So if you are have, well, if you are hoping to have like a bird park, these guys are perfect for that. I love the train on these guys. It looks so beautiful. Rabbit did such an amazing job with these, and they're like made way back in the day when modding just started for Planet Zoo. And of course, here are Midnight and Bronze versions. Here's the Bronze version over here. This one has to be the absolute favorite of mine. Just the coloration on this alone is so beautiful. Look how iridescent it is in the light. We gotta bring this guy over here. And of course, I'm just going to skip over the females because, you know what, they really aren't the most beautiful. Well, I mean, they are beautiful, Rabbit. You did such an amazing job with them, but you know what, we love our boys over here. But, of course, let's check them out nonetheless. That is the bronze female, and this is the midnight female as well. I do apologize for not having, like, all of the uh, variants here. So, the way that they're made is that they're split up between normal and albino skins, and I have like a 50-50 chance of securing either variant when you do go into the trade market. So, for example, if we pop in here and we look up PFAL, we have all these different versions. Bronze and Midnight, here's a male, we can check out the Midnight male. But they are separated down the line, so you get two for the price of one, I like to say. So that's pretty cool over there. And there is a Midnight male, um, that is also my nickname in high school. Don't ask me why, but we can check this guy out right over here. They're a little bit more blue than your normal PFAL, and look at the reflection on that train. It's so beautiful. So if you are hoping to have like, you know, your like little emo boy in your p pen, these guys are perfect for you. Now, of course, we have one last variant to go over. These are the cameo and taupe. Don't ask me what these mean or don't ask me which one is which, but I just know these guys are beautiful nonetheless. So this one is a little bit more of a paler color. 
Uh, just generally desaturated, but still beautiful nonetheless. I feel like the patterns on the Pfal more than make up for it, so that's really beautiful right there. I believe this is the taupe female. I could be entirely mistaken, but she is so beautiful. She's such a looker. There's a little baby right there. Of course, all the babies look beautiful as always. And there is the taupe adult, I want to say. I'm not really too sure. I do love the train on these guys, like, especially from the underside. It's this beautiful, like, burnt orange kind of color. It's so freaking beautiful. So, of course, if you guys do want a bunch more peafowl, definitely do check out rabid stuff. They are completely new species now, and they're amazing. And speaking of new species, Sib, you are gracing us with some wonderful, wonderful stuff over here. So, of course, you sought out to port over pretty much literally the entire game of Jurassic World Evolution. We're pretty much taking all of Jurassic World Evolution and putting it in Planet Zoo. I love that for myself and for everyone at home. So, of course, we have the Gallimimus over here. You guys know these guys. They're from that iconic scene in Jurassic Park. And now you could kind of recreate that in Planet Zoo. And I don't know. They're just so beautiful. They are based off the ostrich. So do keep that in mind if they do eat. We can actually look at happen. Look at it happen right over here. Hopefully they bend down to eat. And we also have the Struthiomimus. Here's the little baby, so they are smaller than the adults, of course. Uh, not different models, so do keep that in mind if you are particularly fond of that kind of stuff. I think it works well nonetheless. They're still really cool to have in this game. And just having more extinct animals, I've noticed like this huge surge of extinct animals recently. It's really amazing to have, and it makes me so happy. And also, here's the albino Struthiomimus. He's this beautiful green color. And I'm just very much a fan of him. He's very tropical. I love him. And hopefully we can see them actually eat. I don't want to leave them without seeing them eat first. Because it is kind of funny. While it is a little bit janky, um, it still makes me happy nonetheless. So maybe we could give them a little bit of water instead. And we can see them sit from that. But, yep, there we go. So they do keep their hands at like this upright position. So it looks like they're doing like, you know, the monster mash or something, but I still love them. Like, look at them go. Look at these guys drink. Oh no, I love the water animals. And speaking of the water animals, we have a couple over here. So let's get back to the present over here with the Tambaki. So of course, these guys are made by Buff Zoo, ported right over from Fishing Planet, I believe. Uh, let's actually get a better looking one over here. Yeah, we can look at this guy. So this one, of course, has a little bit more of a green coloration, and that's the albino version, but of course there is another version. I do apologize for saying of course a lot. Um, yeah, <laughs> but that's just me, you know how it goes? So the Tambaki is a South American freshwater fish, very much closely related to piranhas. They still have some pretty scary teeth, but they are, look a lot more dopey if you could kind of describe them like that. So if you are hoping to have like South American tanks and stuff like that, these guys are perfect for you. And if you're not, maybe you're trying to do like a paleo park, these guys are perfect for you. Buff Sue actually helped me pour in this. So here's the funny thing about this one. So it was originally based off of the Great White Shark from Man Eater. Then I poured, well, Buff Zoo ported that into Planet Zoo. Then I ported that one into Jurassic World Evolution 2. Then I modded that one to become the Helicoprion. And then Buff Zoo took that one and brought it back into Planet Zoo. So all we gotta do is bring this guy into um, Maneater and then we'll come full circle. But of course, I'm getting sidetracked over here. The Helicoprion isn't a shark, believe it or not. They're actually a prehistoric fish, very closely resembling sharks, and they're really, really cool. You guys may notice they have a little bit of a funny mouth. That is because they have these beautiful swirly mouths that they're very iconically known for. And they're just pretty cool creatures nonetheless. They're one of my favorite extinct creatures. They were recently extinct since the Permian period. That was a while ago, I think. Um, but they're cool. I love these guys. So, of course, it's a wonderful custom texture by me. And, yeah, they're just pretty cool. So, of course, if you guys are interested in getting some more prehistoric animals, definitely do check out the Helicarpion out. Now, moving on, we still have a lot more prehistoric animals, and we're going to start off with probably one of my favorites, the Nigersaurus. Named after the country of Niger, these guys are pretty cool. So they are a sauropod, kind of small sauropod, not really as big as you would think, 
but they have these funny looking faces, very much like a hippo. And I don't know, I just really do love these guys. And the skin that uh, Sib chose for these guys is perfect too. I just really love them. They seem so sad, but so cute at the same time. And of course he disappeared. Yeah, that's something they were actually able to do. They disappeared after the Cretaceous period. And over here we also have another one by Sib. This is the Amargosaurus ported over from Jurassic World Evolution 2. And these guys are one of my favorites as well. The second I saw like the reveal for these guys in Jurassic World Evolution 2, it was like love at first sight. So of course these guys are known for having like these beautiful like spikes on their neck. I really do love them. Oh my gosh. I know I say I love everything, but you know what, can you really blame me when Sib brings such beautiful creatures like this into the game? Stunning. And look at them move. So if you guys are interested in making Paleo Parks, now it's like literally the best time. But if you're hoping to have a little bit more realistic park, look elsewhere because these guys are only found in one place in captivity. This is the Lumholtz's Tree Kangaroo, and that one's a little bit of a yellow one. I will be fixing off that like fur variation pretty soon, but let's check out a normal looking one. So these guys are a tree kangaroo only found in Australia. They will be part of the Outback pack once that actually gets released, but these guys are so freaking cute. Look at them go. So they are based off of the koala as are all the other tree kangaroo mods. And they're just really cute guys. So of course this is all made by me. Model was originally made by Nick and look at him go. This is my favorite part. Aww. I sped up instead of paused. I'm such a little brainlet, but with that being said, these guys are really freaking cute. So if you guys are hoping to get some Australian representation into your zoos, definitely do check out the Lumholtz's tree kangaroo, only found in like, you know, that part of Australia. So moving on from there, we are taking a little trip over to Madagascar. I know I already showed off the red-bellied lemur before, but he finally released. And I just want to show off these guys so much. Because this is a female over there, looking absolutely swaggerlicious. And this is a male over here, you guys can tell them apart by the white on their faces. So if you guys are hoping to have a lot more Australian, no, Madagascan representation, definitely do check those guys out. But of course I wanted to show off the Madagascan uh, Crested Ibis, Madagascar Ibis, my bad. So these guys are beautiful, made by the wonderful Rihanna. Uh, these guys are wonderful additions to any Madagascan like section because oftentimes when you think of Madagascar you often think of you know the Fusa, the lemurs, and that's about it. With these, these are like such a wonderful addition to any Madagascar roster and can really help flesh out any really like section on Madagascar and I feel like we don't really do that too often with our Madagascar sections so definitely do check this out if you guys are interested. I love the baby. Love the baby so much. It's so cute. Now, moving on from there, we come to our second to last one with the Goodfellows Tree Kangaroo, made by the wonderful Nicholas Lion Rider. And let's check these guys out in the sun right over here. They are so freaking cute. So these guys are more so common in Europe than anything else. So these guys are the European species, while the Matchy's Tree Kangaroo are more so the American species, at least found in zoos, in captivity for those respective places. These guys are really cute nonetheless. I love these guys so much more. No offense to the Matchies, but these guys just have such a more calming color palette, I guess. And I don't know, look at their cute little faces. Yeah. Even the Keeper loves them. And we can check out the baby as well. Look at him go. He's so tiny. I love them. But with that being said, we are coming up on our very last mod this week, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. How can you guys hate these guys? These guys are badass. So of course with all these dinos being ported in, it was only eventually going to happen that we would get the T-Rex in the game and Nick did a good job at porting these guys. Obviously we don't have any theropod rigs in the game so it had to go on the cassowary. But I feel like it's pretty good in all things considered. I think it's pretty fun when they do like open their beaks a little bit because it's, it just looks so dopey. I love these guys. So if you guys do want some dopey T-Rexes, they, you can, honestly, here's the lore. They injected them with cassowary DNA. That works, all right? I assume so. So if you guys are hoping to get some T-Rexes in your game, definitely do check them out. There, he's doing the mouth thing. I love them. 
But with that being said, that is it for our entire showcase over this week. I gotta say, I have a lot of favorites this week, but the Gelada is definitely one of my favorites. Where is the mail though? Because I want to end it on our beautiful, beautiful mail over here. But definitely do let me know your favorites in the comments down below. We had such a wonderful little week for mods, and I can't wait to see what next week has to bring. Maybe we'll even get some more dinosaurs, who really knows. But with that being said, my name is Leaf. As always, it is so wonderful to have you guys here. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.